Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Do The Work. Here we're going to cover question 22 of the math proficiency test for teachers in Ontario. Before we get going, I would strongly appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button below and hit the bell beside it. That way you could support the channel while also receiving notification for all future videos. And you can always turn it off if you don't want them anymore. So here we have a question where we're given four terms of a growing pattern. We have 1 over 64, 1 over 32, 1 over 16, 1 over 8. And there's an obvious pattern here, but the question is, what is the seventh term of this pattern? Is it 2, 1, 1 half, or 1 quarter? I encourage you to try this question by yourself. If you need help, I think this video would help a lot. It's a uh, introduction to geometric sequences. And it turns out that this is a geometric sequence. And just for your own knowledge, the, there, there is arithmetic. And that's when you add and or subtract. It's kind of the same thing each time. So for example, that would be something like um, 2, 4, 6, 8, whatever, right? You add two every time. And then you have a geometric. Maybe I'll change colors. Uh, let me use blue geometric and then that's when you multiply or divide so you multiply or divide so that would be 2 4 8 16 32 dot 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 you double every time so here the pattern would instead of being plus 2 it would be times 2 so in blue is a geometric sequence and so we have uh, this particular sequence with 164. So we can try to notice the pattern. We have a times one on top, right? It's times one. But here, we're really we're dividing by two. So let's try to figure out. And that's what we do every time we divide that number by two. But when we divide the denominator by two, it's really doing one over 64 times two, because that's remember when we divide fractions, we multiply. So try to multiply these two out instead of doing divided or times one uh, divided by one half, really what you're doing is you're uh, multiplying by two. So when you multiply these two out, you can simplify. So this divided by two is 32. This divided by two is one. Therefore, you get one over 32 when you multiply across. Similarly, when you multiply, I'll do it in green, multiply this by two over one, you can divide this by two, you get one, this you get 16. And then that's obviously our one over 16. So the point is that each term you do times two. So let's say I rewrite my uh, I'll do it manually, just that's just like based on our knowledge that it is times two every time and that the denominator is half of what it was, just how fractions work. So then half of that would be a quarter and then twice as much. What's let's say you have a quarter in your pocket. What's twice as much? Well, it's one half, right? So that's one half. And then let's just keep track here that this is n is equal to one n is equal to two n is equal to three n is equal to four, that's the fourth term, n is equal to five, n is equal to six, and n is equal to seven. We need one more. So half of two is one, right? If you have 50 cents and you double that, you have a full dollar. So I'll put this one in red. So you have one over one, so I'll just write one. So that is our answer, and we're done, right? Technically we're done. But the nice thing about uh, these things, it's it's called a geometric sequence because there's a multiplication is do you have this formula, you have that a n, the general term can be found using a formula because what if I asked you what's the 2000 term, not the seventh, you could do it manually, it's just as easy, but it's pretty tedious, right? So if only there could be a formula that predicts the, the last term. Well, it turns out there is the a n that's the nth term. So I'll, I'll write that uh, like this. 
that's the nth term. The a is the first term. And the r is the common ratio. That's, in our case, it was two. Common ratio, in our case, it was two. The thing you multiply by each time. The, the ratio that you multiply each term to get the next term. And n is just the nth, like the nth index, if you want. That's, that's what you want. So for example, a1 is the, the first one. And it might be zero, but I think it's one. <laughs> a1 is the first one, pretty sure. Because then it would be um, one minus one, and then that's r to the zero, and that anything to the zero is one. So then a1 would just be a, and that makes sense because a is the first term. So yes, n equals one is our first term. So let's express our nice formula. We have a n is equal to a r n to the minus one. So we have a n, so n is seven. So I'll just write the general formula. So we have a n, a is our first term. So that's one over 64, that's the first term. And then r is two, that's what we said, right? And then that's n to the negative one. Uh, to the n minus one. So then a seven is just one over 64. And then that's times two to the six, or seven minus one, but six. So turns out two to the five is 35 because two times two times two times two is 35. So two to the six uh, is sorry, it's not 35. It's 32. Two to the five is 32. So two to the six is 64. So really what we have is we have one over 64 times 64. When you multiply these fractions out, you can imagine like an imaginary one, 64 cancels out, and then you're left with that same one. Isn't that magical? So we're, we're done. We built, we already built a little bit of intuition, but if we want to go further and I ask you, what is the 15th term? Then obviously you're not going to do it by hand. You could, I mean, it's not that much, right? But generally you'd use the formula and, and we won't here. What I'll do is I'll play around with Desmos. Again, the link will be in the description below and also in the PDF that is also found in the description. But here, when we launch Desmos, we can see that if I hit play, the nth term is just doubling in height. So each point doubles in height every time. So you, you can't really tell, but you, it grows with exponential growth because your variable is in the exponent. It's kind of like a, the pandemic going on right now. At first, it doesn't seem like big increases, but then all of a sudden, a dub, if it doubles every time, then it increases very much at the end. And it doesn't take that long, right? Only f uh, 15 days of doubling and it, it's pretty up there already. So you can, again, you can click the link in the description to play around with this visualization. But it's always nice to think of sequences not only as formulas, but also what they represent graphically as well. Because then later on in math, there's concepts like convert convergence, and that's simply, does it approach a specific value? And for this one, it wouldn't, right? It just keeps going bigger and bigger. It approaches infinity, but that, that is divergent, essentially. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video of Do the Work.